I'd like to invite up here, I'd like to ask Brian to come back up and give us a brief overview of what's happening in Canada, and then we'll get uh, Bomber to come up and do the Q&A session. Thanks very much, Brian. Thank you, Grant, and, and I would like to acknowledge the, uh, the Star Trust Foundation. I didn't do that earlier as part of my disclosure, so thank you for the invitation. And I would also like to acknowledge the Canadian Drug Policy Coalition who put together that nice animated slide, and so if you're interested in getting a hold of that, you can contact the Canadian Drug Policy Coalition. I'm, I'm gonna hit on a few more public health points before getting into um, novel psychoactive substances in Canada. Uh, originally, I had one slot and then I ended up with two, so a number of my slides uh, we're gonna go this afternoon, so I'm gonna skip through a few of them. Uh, talk a little bit more about and the, um, an international conference coming up at the end. So we'll skip the, the, the public health approach. I've already talked about that, but just to recognize that from a public health perspective, we recognize that there really is uh, a spectrum of, of use. And I wanna really highlight the beneficial side here. There's a lot of talk about harms, not enough talk about the benefits, and it was great to hear Rick Doblin at lunchtime talk about the, the beneficial side. It, it, it's a balancing act, and the, um, the, the importance of, of, of actually benefits is, is one of the key elements in terms of actually achieving a balanced approach. Uh, we'll just flip through a range of these, because I've, I've spoken to these already, although I, so, in terms of a, a public health ap approach, I spoke uh, this morning about regulation as one of the elements, and there are a whole range of others, and there could be a lecture on each of these elements, but I won't, I won't do that. But just to highlight that health promotion is critical, health protection, in, in which would be considered where the regulatory realm fits, prevention and harm reduction, which we, we've heard a lot about as well, Population health assessment. This is a critical piece. You can put all these um, measures in, uh, in place, but if you're not tracking what's happening at the population level, you're still wandering in the dark. So it's, it's really critical to have a, a solid evaluation scheme where your, your surveillance and population health assessment is being done to know what track you're on, where you're going, and how to change course along the way. And, of, and, and then, of course, looking at, at, at what are the the, the, uh, the negative outcomes that maybe are turning up that you weren't anticipating, so your surveillance system is critical. Uh, I mentioned the importance of services to people who are at risk. I mentioned, and, and then there are two other things to think about. One are your universal measures, and I think the, for example, the law is a universal measure ties to the whole population. That's important. But also the targeted measures, as, a, as a, w was asked earlier about ensuring that people who are at particular risk, vulnerable populations, receive targeted measures that, uh, that help to uh, reduce the, uh, the risks of, of harm to those groups. Uh, the, the spectrum of, uh, of, of, of approaches, um, it's a, we are looking here for a whole new range of approaches, which is not on this chart, and that is the regulation of these substances within a public health approach. So while you have prohibition, you have state control, you have commercialization, you have prescription, the, the, the middle ground that we've talked about today is, is, is a potential new element to this chart. Uh, I mentioned benefits and harms, and this isn't to really show, to, so to allow you to read the details, but just to highlight that point that benefits and harms are, are equally important to consider in, the, in this discussion. Uh, been, been through the harms of prohibition, saw that. Saw, saw that, so we'll get past that. And uh, I'm going to talk about the novel psychoactive substances in Canada, and I want to acknowledge our uh, Canadian Centre for Substance Abuse, Ma Dr. Matthew Young, for these, these slides. Uh, again, like the previous speakers, not a huge amount of, of, of good news to talk about. We, we don't have a lot of information. Uh, the rapid emergence 
it means that standard uh, monitoring and surveillance activities are not uh, keeping up with what's happening. And most of the detec detected substances fall into, the, into two categories, synthetic cathinones and synthetic cannabinoids. However, there continues to be seizures of what are referred to as amphetamine-like stimulants. Uh, so uh, some of the information that I was able to obtain came from our, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And th these are information that they provide. That Canada is a primary source of MDMA and methamphetamine for US, Australia, and Southeast Asia. And often novel psychoactive substances are held out to be an MDMA. And it's difficult to determine what the exact concentrations are of, are of these. Uh, the availability of methamphetamine may remain strong and, and as well ketamine. And, and DMT labs are also in existence. Uh, increasingly, novel psychoactive substances are being imported to keep up with demand and, and to circumvent the legislation. Again, a similar sort of scenario using the synthetic can cannabinoids to avoid uh, drug testing by people working in, in uh, the, oil, the oil fields. Uh, a range of substances being detected, as indicated here. The, um, so in terms of regulation, the two major products that the Canadian government tackled, and this is important to recognize that in Canada, the federal government is in charge of criminal law, and the provincial governments are in charge of health law, and there is some overlap with health law with the federal government. So BZP and TFMPP were scheduled by, as uh, prohibited substances in March 29, 2012. There is a... a uh, and then uh, MDPV, which has been referred to as plant food or bath salts, scheduled in September of 2012. Uh, there is a loophole, if you will, or a, some flexibility in the Canadian legislation to allow government authorization. And this is where the, the, the Canadian government has allowed the supervised uh, injection site as well as the heroin treatment trials. And initially, the medical cannabis laws came up with... Um, and, and government refers to the federal government. So there is latitude within the federal legislative scheme to allow for regulations to be developed. It's really a more of a matter of, of political will and it is legislation. Uh, in, as far as the synthetic cannabinoids go, the federal government Canada perspective is that they can be prohibited as similar synthetic preparations to cannabis. And, and uh, they are continuing to analyze those. Uh, our epidemiology network really hasn't detected that these are being used much widely in Canada. Uh, small amounts of, of seizures. And when the youth drug surveys are done both in Ontario and BC, uh, very low rates of use of synthetic cannabis and declining rates of use of crystal meth, ecstasy. Uh, so. Uh, partly, uh, it, the, 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 the lack of use of some of these substances may reflect, uh, as was mentioned earlier, the more widespread availability of, of cannabis, uh, MDMA, and, and, uh, and methamphetamine. Uh, again, our a a general population survey showing very low rates of use of, of these substances. Uh, just want to mention a couple of studies that are happening in Canada. Uh, to, to sort of underscore that benefit side of the equation. There's a study going on on treating post-traumatic stress disorder with MDA, MA being organized in, uh, in Vancouver, and a, a study being organized to look at ayahuasca treatment for addiction and compulsive behavior. So there's definitely interest in the research community on, on, the, on the, uh, the potential uh, beneficial effects. Uh, this is a, a, a series of slides uh, showing uh, media reports, and so I'm going to click through these, and what you'll see is is the dots start to appear. Partly, one of the, um, uh, I mentioned Dr. Matthew Young, trying to get a handle on what's happening with these substances worldwide. There is a public health information network which tracks media reports. So uh, what it, it, what this originally was done, it was to track, use the media to track communicable diseases occurring. It was an early detection method. And what, um, so what they have done here, and this is just a, a pilot test, so this is, you know, it's definitely bugs to be worked out, but they track media reports of drug seizures, 
and arrests, morbidity involving the drug, general report of presence, and health warning of a new product. So there's a few different colors, and I won't go through all the, the different colors, but you'll see where the media reports are showing where these substances are turning up. So as you click through, this starts in 2009, and it'll go to 2013. So not too many reports. Then you start to see some spots occurring in North America, up to 2011, some more media reports, more concentrated on the East Coast and the West Coast, starting to see some reports pop up in New Zealand and Australia, lots on the East Coast of North America, and lots more reports, whoops, more recently. So, I mean, how much media reports reflect what's actually going on is still up to, up to debate, but it certainly is an indication of where some of the activity is. And uh, that's it. And just to mention, the very last thing is the Third International Conference on no Novel Psychoactive Substances having May 15th, 15th, 16th, 2014. It's on Rome. If you can't get to Rome, you can attend online. And the website is there. So uh, it, 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 this is the third. And so this is becoming a, a very interest, an area of interest at the international scientific community, and so I'd just like to, to highlight that if, if and maybe, maybe Grant's gonna go to Rome now. Well, I'm gonna see you in Rome. All right. Thank you very much, Juan.